for the repeal of the law that permits mining in forest reserves at a thought leadership forum organized here by Media General and the Nature and Development Foundation. We have highlights and more on this all important conversation tonight. Also, protesters of the Democracy Hub who were arrested during the anti Galamse demonstration still in remand as their lawyers frantically seek bail for their release. We have updates for you on exactly what happened in court today. And guess what? This protest has also been recorded in the UK. Some Ghanaians in uh, also the UK and New York uh, in the United States have all joined in the calls for these Democracy Hub protesters to be released. Stay with us. We'll give you updates on that here on Ghana Tonight. Also, coming up this evening, the managing director of the Electricity Company of Ghana, Samuel Jubik Mahama, resigns, citing personal reasons. Could there be more to it? Well, stay with us. We have some detail for you. On Ghana tonight, as always, including manifesto check and also some issues on labor. Well, a number of uh, labor unions on strike and others set to go on strike beginning tomorrow. That's the Mortuary Workers Association. Serve notice. As always, you're on a part of the show. Let's hear from you. The hashtag we're using is Ghana tonight on Facebook and on X. Let's get talking. This is your election command center. Let's settle for Ghana Briefs. Lawyers of Democracy Hub have petitioned Shraj to investigate alleged human rights abuses meted out by the Ghana Police Service. They are asking the commission to establish that the police conduct during the protest was unprofessional. Meanwhile, two members of Democracy Hub, Oliver Bakavomawa and Fanny Otu, have been admitted to the police hospital following complaints of ill health. <music> Former Chief Executive Officer of Minerals Commission, Tony Obin, has agreed with call by civil society for the repeal of LI-2462 that allows for mining in forest reserves. He joined other guest speakers and panelists at the Thought Leadership Forum organized by Media General in partnership with Nature and Development Foundation, who resolved that a state of emergency should be called, placing a moratorium on all forms of mining. Mr. President must announce, must come back to fellow Ghanaians again. Fellow Ghanaians, I said we should, we should do the the forest, whatever, mining in the forest. But uh, no, we have taken it out. I think it will bring confidence. Otherwise, nobody is confident that we are able to resolve this. The arrest of some protesters of the Stop Galamse Now demonstration have heightened calls for government's immediate intervention to the Kanka causing destruction to the environment and water bodies. For General Secretary of the Ghana Agricultural Workers Union, Edward Kariwe, the arrest is a clear case of abuse of power, casting doubt on the country's readiness to end Galamse. The arrest of these protesters is a clear example of the state abusing its power. The police have no business arresting these uh, protesters. What are they doing? Galamse is not even taking place in Accra. And these are young men and women who have gathered and come to Accra to do demonstration, to draw home what we already know. The minority in parliament says government and the Ghana Gas Company are attempting to sign an $800 million contract for gas processing without parliamentary approval. Ranking member of the Energy Committee of Parliament, John Ginapo says the contract has the tendency to cause judgment's debt and cautioned the chief executive of the Ghana Gas Company to desist from signing it. The government of Ghana and Ghana Gas have not secured a firm commitment on the supply of raw gas for processing by this entity that they want to sign a contract with. And with just about two months to leave office, they are determined to use whatever means possible to compel the chief executive to execute this contract. Let me send a very firm and stern warning to the chief executive of the Ghana Gas Company Limited. Don't allow yourself or politicians 
to use you for their selfish parochial interest and gains. We therefore call on Ghana Gas to make all the documents available to Parliament. In a significant policy shift, Ghana's National Sports Authority, NSA, has announced that the country's sports stadiums will now be prioritized primarily for sporting events. This decision comes after a period of decline in stadium conditions that's led to international embarrassment for the nation. Now, the NSA, through its board chairman, Seth Panwum, says the priority will be on using the facilities for sporting events. We've directed that our facilities will not be available for other non-sporting activities that would include the usage of the pitch until such time that we hold claim to pitch covers. Uh, uh, that's one news on 3news.com. Make some time and visit 3news.com. This is Ghana Tonight. As always, you're an integral part of the conversation. Let's hear from you. Coming up next on Ghana Tonight, this is your election command center as the National Democratic Congress writes to the Electoral Commission to follow up on their petition to have the voters register. That is audited. The movement for change as well are also joining in the calls and raising concerns and the need to have this voters register audited. We have all of that, including some protests in the United States related to this matter. This is your election command center. Well, just a little over a week ago, the NDC and some uh, other per in interest groups and also like-minded persons were on the streets drumming home that concern and the need for the Electoral Commission to consider an audit to the voters register that was exhibited, the limited voters register. Well, it's been a little over a week. They gave the Electoral Commission a one-week ultimatum, sort of, to consider that call. We would hear from them exactly what the next step is. But they've wrote a follow-up letter to the Electoral Commission. We have a copy of that letter indicating that since a week ago that they hit the streets and presented that petition to the EC with a number of demands, they haven't heard from the Electoral Commission after the enough is enough demonstration. So what next? This is the uh, portions of the letter as we have it. Let's say that this follow-up letter to the Electoral Commission, let's say, has become necessary due to the fact that the Commission has not had the courtesy to reply their petition till date. Neither has the Commission officially responded to the serious issues they have raised in the petition and the request for a forensic audit thereof. We we'll continue. That that's we NDC by this letter reminding the commission of the critical importance of a credible voters register to the impending December 7 polls. Hence the need for an audit of the electoral roll and its IT system to identify the vulnerabilities therein and effectively address the numerous anomalies we have put before you. They conclude that they respectfully await the swift response and or action on this urgent matter of considerable public interest. It is the hope that their response, that's the Electoral Commission's response, will be in accordance with their own declared motto, transparency, fairness, and integrity. So that's the NDC's letter to the Electoral Commission, essentially reminding them of the demands in that petition presented just a little over a week ago after the that's uh, enough is enough demonstration. Dr. Rashid Tanko Computer is the director of elections, deputy director of elections and IT for the NDC. Joining us on Zoom right now, Dr. Computer, good evening. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Uh, good evening, Alfred. Let me say good evening to your cherished viewers. Great. Now, I see in the letter that after this enough is not enough demonstration last week, Tuesday, you haven't received any responses from the Electoral Commission per the demands in that petition. So you've written a letter to them, reminding them. So after this, then what next? Ah, very well. Uh, we, we wrote a letter yesterday uh, uh, to remind them about uh, the petition we presented to them. Uh, clearly, uh, we, we demanded certain uh, responses from them. And the only thing they did was to write to uh, acknowledge receipt of uh, our petition and, and promise to respond accordingly uh, to the petition that we've written and presented to them. But since then, they've been very mute about it. They've not said anything about the, the petition 
uh, uh, we presented to them. And so, so it, it, it makes sense for us to, to send them a reminder uh, yesterday about a petition after meeting the CSOs and then the diplomatic missions, uh, as well as uh, senior journalists and then the uh, uh, religious leaders, uh, which they, 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 they are now gotten drip of what we, we've been talking all along about uh, the uh, issue uh, of uh, the, the currency order. Right. So you give the EC a, a one-week ultimatum. The one week has elapsed. You've written a letter to them. What responses exactly were you expecting of them within this, uh, th that, that period that you gave them, this one week? Well, we're expecting them to, uh, to agree to the terms of uh, the forensic audit, uh, 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 just to let us have this forensic audit uh, to look into the matter, may, may mean the root cause of all this. That is what we're just looking at. And then the issue of uh, re-exhibiting the register was also another issue that we wanted them to look at critically. But they've been stuck silent about this. They have not been talking about it. They are silent about it. Only that we've been getting snipers of uh, uh, secret memos they've been sending to their district directors and regional directors, trying to do behind the scene uh, cleaning of the register and freezing of the, the data uh, uh, today. I mean, we've intercepted a lot of memos from them. Uh, sending it to their distance. So it means behind the scenes, they, they appear to be doing something that Ghanaians are not aware. But we, our eagle eyes on them. We are monitoring them every bit of what they are doing. I uh, see. Clearly, when, when a government is going down, you should expect all this. I mean, we get we intercept a lot of information from them. So you uh, cited, you, you say you cited memos from the Electoral Commission to its district officers to conduct some sort of an audit of the register. Very well, yes, yes. In fact, they have asked them uh, to do certain work for them. I mean, it's, it appears uh, they, they, they cannot handle it at the national level. So their district directors have been commissioned to, uh, to do certain work, and they've been given deadlines, I mean, uh, as to how to present certain uh, anomalies. Just today, we've managed to uh, uncover another one, which they are talking about uh, uh, missing names, names that are missing. They should try and bring them back. Uh, uh, those transfers that they have difficulties with how to, to, to try to uh, work on them around the clock to make sure that they get all these transfers back into the system and then uh, and present it at the close of today. I mean, that's what they, they are doing. So in, on the blind side, a lot of people, you don't know this. This, this is what they are doing uh, behind the scene. I see. Uh, and all this is because the NDC Eagle Eye has pushed them uh, to, to go back to the, uh, to the drawing board. I mean, nonetheless, we are not relenting on our call to have forensic audit. We must mm -hmm. make sure that they themselves have agreed and they've realized that there's a mistake they have committed and that mistake is haunting them. I so they, they are behind this injury. Right. Right. After, after this letter of reminder, then what next? Because you're just reminding them to, to respond to the details or the demands in your petition. But what, what's going to be next? Alfred, ideally, this question shouldn't have been posed to us. We have just triggered an issue. And we're expecting the question should be thrown to Ghanaians. Because it is not only NDC who is protecting the democracy, Alfred. It is all Ghanaians, lovers of our democracy, should be asking what next. The EC is silent, they are not doing anything. But for us, as a political party, we have a very beautiful plan lined up for them. Very beautiful plan. If they don't respond to this, and one of it is what we told them the other time, that look, clearly, you are running away from forensic audit now, there will be bigger forensic audit come 2025. As soon as His Excellency John Dramani Mama is sworn in, we will even cross over to the next day. We will call for that for forensic audit. That's one aspect. But within this period, we have other plans. You remember when we met the, the CSU? My boss triggered something a bit and said, district demonstration re, uh, loaded. District okay. demonstration loaded. Right. That was a, a, a thing he put out there. A teaser. Mm. You see, we don't want to go that path. Okay. And General Secretary also made a point that look, we shouldn't be pushed to what we don't want to do. Okay. That we want to do. Right. And so that one, they shouldn't push it because clearly you cannot accept guilt of your own problems, and yet you are running away from the audit. Dr. Tanko, that so I, I get an indication that you've already given the notice that if in the coming days you, you still get the, the silence from the Electoral Commission and no answers to the petition, the details of that petition and demands, you would 
kick in the next round of actions, that's the constituency and district demonstrations, to drum home the demand for a forensic audit? That's just an, a leg, one leg of the issues that okay. we, we have planned ahead. And like my boss indicated, it's loading. You see, if something is loading, you should still have to fine tune it and to make sure that the right thing is done. Because we are not going to lend on this. We right. are not going to lend on it. As a political party, we are serious about it. And we had engagement with diplomatic missions. We have engagement with the religious leaders. We have engagement with civil society. And we've given them. Now everybody is aware of the enormity of the issue. They are very clear in their mind. Nobody is now saying that NDC, you don't have a point. Now they say the NDC, you have an issue. Your point is there. The problem is that maybe the word forensic that we, are, we have used, that is scaring them. But why would why wouldn't you use forensic, Alfred? If somebody has criminally sat in the office to transfer people without the knowledge of them, why do we, why are you running away from forensic? That is criminal conduct. Okay. So forensic audit will unearth this. Doctor Ashi, thank you. The 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 the, the 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 scale of this criminality. Right. In order to forestall this thing happening in the future. I appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. I will keep an eye on this one as well and see how things play out. Thank you for joining us. Dr. Ashit Tanko Computer is Deputy Director of IT and Elections for the NDC. Now, that call for the consideration of forensic audit by the Electoral Commission is not limited to just the NDC or the PPP or other interest groups that have also made their position quite clear on this. The latest to make that call publicly is a movement for change led by Alan Kojo Chemanting. They issued a statement earlier today. Take a look at this. They say, quote, establish a high-level technical working group chaired by the Electoral Commission with representatives of candidates cleared for the general elections and the EC's data management consultants. Also, this working group should agree on the process and procedures for a full and comprehensive audit of the current voter register based on source documents, including the 2020 voters register, limited registration info since 2021, voter transfers and special voters list. Essentially, they say that each of these working group members should be provided access to original copies of the source documents to verify the entries and ensure accuracy. And also the candidates with written evidence of compromised data must submit it to the technical working group before the start of the audit process, essentially. So that's, these are the demands of the, of the movement for change in that statement that I put out earlier today. While we are at it, the president, Nanado Dankwe Kofuado, addressed the gathering at the United Nations General Assembly, 79th session earlier today, and he had a few words concerning the election ahead of us and the Electoral Commission as well. Take a look. The Electoral Commission, supported by Ghana's security services, is well equipped to ensure that the will of the Ghanaian people is respected. The 2024 elections will be proof of our enduring adherence to the rule of law, transparency, and the principles of democratic accountability that have guided our nation in recent decades. As my presidency draws to a close, I want to assure this assembly that the upcoming 2024 elections in Ghana will be free, fair, and transparent. Ghanaians have demonstrated time and again in the last three decades their strong attachment to democracy, which they will not permit to be undermined. Well, as President Kofado there at the United Nations General Assembly, uh, where we made the old election command center, while he was addressing the gathering at the UN General Assembly, there was a lot happening just a few meters away from the venue of that assembly. There are some Ghanaians living in the U.S., specifically New York, who also protested but a number of issues. In fact, there were two groups. The, a group of MPP supporters who massed up some meters away from the venue and some persons who were also concerned about the state of affairs in the country and also uh, the, the, the making demands of a change in the December 7 elections. Let's hear from the MPP supporters in, in New York who massed up as well to offer support to the president. Take a look. Okay, so these are Ghanaians living abroad. 
we are so proud of what the president has done for the country. And as he wraps up his, his tenure as president, he is here uh, the 79th session of Onga, and uh, we are so proud of what he has achieved for the country. That is why we are here. Well, you hear some people shouting at the background, away, away. So those are the, the other group of persons. Uh, these were persons who were not too happy about the state of affairs in the country. They were there as well to make their voices heard. Take a look. We are very disappointed and that's why we left our houses early morning to come here to express our concerns to the president that the Thank country you. is on the wrong course. We need to change and we are asking Ghanaians to do the right thing. Well, so there you have those two groups and these are Ghanaians also making their voices heard. That's a few meters away from the United Nations General Assembly venue. Then let's cross over to New York right now live here on your election command center and uh, our international affairs correspondent my colleague sunny abdul rahman is joining us live from uh, the streets of new york right now uh, sunny appreciate your time thank you for joining us here on ghana tonight uh, we see a lot of activity has been taking place outside of the venue when the president was speaking talk to me about it well you know some of these international appearances uh, often attract uh citizens from your country who may be residing in the host country and they may be having a lot of concerns about how the country is governed and we've not we've seen this not just with President Takufado but with other countries as well countries in the Middle East countries in Asia countries uh, from Europe you know the situation in Ukraine we've seen a lot of European countries rallying uh, support for Ukraine and also when countries that are in support of Russia are uh, delivering their statement, they come there with placards holding messages in solidarity with Ukraine. So these are not out of the ordinary. But today uh, was quite unusual because the numbers of people who troop there in support or against uh, the presidency of President Akufado was quite enormous. A lot of them holding placards uh, with inscriptions such as the EC must go. They want the uh, illegal mining, which has become a dominant issue back home, also addressed. Uh, and a lot of issues. We also saw one side of the group who were really appreciative of the presidency of President Akufado, who were of the view that the three senior high school alone uh, that has resulted, according to the presidency, some 5.7 million uh, Ghanaian children being enrolled in the secondary uh, education. Uh, that alone, according to them, is, is quite massive, and they, they want to thank the president for that. So we have two groups, some against what the presidency has done, others in support of the presidency. I see. And, and those two groups, we, we heard them, saw them quite clearly uh, there. But they were not alone. There was a third group that you made reference to, the third group of persons who were protesting about these uh, democracy hub demonstrators who have been arrested and have been detained as we speak. Sunny, stay with me because uh, that's the issue coming up next year on Ghana tonight. Ghanaians in the United States of America have also joined in the protest demanding that the, the persons, the democracy have protesters who have been remanded should be released. That's coming up next year on Ghana tonight. We cross over now and still stay on this particular issue. Ibrahim, uh, Sunny Abdul Rahman, my colleague and international affairs correspondent, is still with us here um, on Ghana tonight. And well, let, let's first of all hear from the Ghanaians in the, the US, specifically in New York, who hit the streets today to also join in the calls by many people to have these democracy help protesters who were arrested over the weekend protesting about the impact of illegal mining they should be released take a look so we are here for one reason in solidarity with our brothers who have been arrested for protesting they are protesting for illegal mining activities causing our water bodies to be poisoned and polluted this is how the water bodies look in Ghana now, except the northern part of the country, the Volta region to the northern part. Every other water body in Ghana looks exactly like this. The reason is the Chinese, in collaboration with the president and his people, are mining gold in, this, in the rivers, in the rivers, in the lakes, 
and this is what the water looks like. And this is the president of Ghana, Nana Akufuado. And what is happening now is when people raise their voices against the water pollution, he uses the police to arrest them, intimidate them, and as we speak, about 50 of our colleagues are in detention because the, police, the president controls the judiciary. He controls the police service. And people are quiet in the country. And we cannot allow this to continue. And we want the international media, the United Nations, to put the president in order because you cannot hold protesters in prison as well as in police cells without legal representation and medical care. This is what is happening. 60-year-olds 60 are getting arrested. Little kids who or were in, included in the protest are being uh, are detained as we speak. Pregnant women are being detained as we speak. And this is the president of Ghana. This is what illegal mining called Galamse looks like. And I want you to go on the internet and do a search for Galamse or illegal mining in Ghana. And I bet you see all our rivers looking like this. And we cannot even speak. Very soon, Ghana will be importing water. People are having kidney diseases because the water is polluted. The Ghana Water Company cannot even find the right chemicals to be able to um, fix, uh, purify the water for, uh, for normal consumption. Many people are importing water into the country, and this is what we are standing against. We are also in solidarity with our brothers who have been arrested and have been detained, and we are asking the government to release them as soon as possible. Release the protesters now. Release the citizens now. Release the citizens now. Release the citizens now. Release the citizens now. Okay. Hi. to echo the sentiment of many Ghanaians. We want to ask the President, Nana Adodankwa Akufuadu, Mr. President, why are you allowing Galamse to destroy our water bodies and our envi environment? Why? There are a set of um, SDG goals, which are the Sustainability Development Goals, that have been impacted in Ghana, and I want to highlight goals 6, 13, 15, and 3 about clean water and sanitation, climate change, life on land, good health and well-being. We need accountability. Mr. President, in your early campaign, earlier campaigns, you said Ghanaians should not be spectators, but we should be citizens. And today, we're here to be citizens to ask you for accountability because you have turned your back on us. You have violated our human rights. And this is not democracy, Mr. President. It is tyranny. Also, for the over 40 peaceful protesters that have been detained, detained, we stand in solidarity with them. We ask you, Mr. President, to release them and to give them their basic human rights, allow them their rights to legal counsel, and let their families know about their whereabouts. Mr. President, this is your legacy. Legacy. You are corrupt, you are callous, yeah. callous and you are accomplices. And today we stand here to call you out and to hold you accountable. We are the future of Ghana and we will not sit and watch you do this. Well, so those were the, the, another group of Ghanaians there outside of the, uh, in fact, some meters away from that venue where the United Nations General Assembly is taking place in New York in the United States. And Sunny, uh, international affairs correspondent, is still with us, connecting with us live right now from uh, the streets of New York. And we also have Noah Adamte. Noah Adamte is uh, one of the lawyers for this Democracy Hub protesters who are in police and prison custody as we speak. Sunny, uh, quite clear in their, in their message, their demand and their voices there. The Ghanaians are on the streets also joining in the calls for these protesters to uh, be released, is it not? I didn't get the last part of your question. And, and, I, and I was asking this quite clear that the demand that they are also making that these protesters who have been arrested be released, is it not? Yes, uh, uh, that featured prominently in their demands today. Uh, if you look at the placard they were holding, it had the inscription uh, asking for these uh, protesters to be released. And they, some of them were telling me they, they are scared of even coming back home to 
also join in the protest because that was the original plan that they had. Uh, the issue of Galamse, uh, quite surprising in the president's statements, he made mention of uh, the fact that the international community needed to do more to ensure that the environment is preserved for future generations. But just uh, in his backyard, we have this key concern of uh, Galamse, which has uh, dominated discussions on the local front, and it does appear not much effort uh, is being seen on the part of the authorities to address this concern. So quite a tricky uh, part of the statement of the president of the UN, because right when he made mention of the fact that the world needed to do more to preserve uh, the environment, I was asking myself, uh, then where is the commitment to address the issue of Galamsee back home? Uh, if the president wants the uh, world to support Ghana, support uh, and do all that they can in their respective locations to ensure that the environment is preserved, then it has to lead by example, Alfred. Sonny, appreciate you on this. And, and while you stay with me, let me also bring in Noah Damte. Mr. Damte, good evening. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. And, and first off, give us an idea of what happened in court earlier today. We understand 13 of the protesters were arraigned before court today. What happened? Yes, um, so 13 of the protesters were brought in today and arraigned before the circuit court in Accra, circuit court six. So um, all of them were made to uh, um, were asked to make their plea and all of them pleaded not guilty. So out of the 13, I, I need to say this, out of the 13 that were brought to the court, the first accused person, that's Oliver Bakavomawo, and the ninth accused person, that is Fanny Otu, were not in court because they are not feeling well and they are receiving treatment at the police hospital. So the two of them did not attend court. They were not arraigned. So 11, um, yeah, 11 out of the 13 were arraigned before the court today. They were made to take their plea and they all pleaded not guilty. So after if their charges have been read to them, they pleaded not guilty, and then the lawyers moved the court for a motion for bail to be granted to them. So um, the 13 persons that were supposed to be arraigned, all of them had individual lawyers representing each person. Okay, so even for those who could not attend or were not arraigned because they were receiving medical treatment, they had lawyers in court representing them. And the motions were moved by each lawyer for their respective um, clients that they were representing in court. So today's proceedings took a longer time. Um, around five, getting to six, we were still in court. And when <coughs> the lawyers for the accused persons were done making their motion to the court for bail, um, the court adjourned proceedings to tomorrow at 1.30 p.m. to listen to the state attorney speaking for the attorney general's opposition to the motion for bail for the protesters. So tomorrow, we are going to hear why the state believes the 11 accused persons that were arraigned, yes, and that were arraigned today should not be granted bail. But we are believing that the facts that were laid before the court and the legal arguments canvassed will sway the court to grant bail in the interest of justice to the persons who were arraigned today. Of any updates of, on the health of Oliver Bakavamawa as we speak, and then also the other person whom you say they are both receiving treatment? So the, the last the update I heard was when we were informed in court that they were still in the hospital receiving treatment. So they will not be um, arraigned, that was today, and then the likelihood that they will be presented tomorrow or the few days after was not a plausible conclusion to arrive at. So we know they are in the hospital, but we have not received um, any updates since we left hospital, but they are receiving treatment. And confirm this for me. We have some information that a pregnant woman is also part of those who have been 
uh, detained or are in police custody as we speak? Yes, yes. So there is um, a pregnant woman who has been detained. Um, as we speak, she was part of the group that came to court yesterday and um, she was remanded to police custody. Um, but apart from the pregnant woman, which is a very serious issue, and we are hoping that the Attorney General's office, the Women's Caucus in Parliament, the Ministry of Gender will intervene and, and see to it that the pregnant woman does not spend the two weeks in, in cells or in custody, because that's, that, that will be um, unacceptable in the face of our criminal justice system. But beyond that, there are persons who were remanded to custody who are suffering serious um, medical conditions. There is a lady who was suffering from tetanus who, who was before the court. There is another lady who is diabetic and asthmatic. And since she was picked up on Sunday, she had not received any medical treatment. And even when her relatives had brought um, medical um, drugs to be given to her, they were deprived of the chance of giving the drugs to, to the woman. And there is a young man who also has a kidney infection. And um, I remember before we went to court, one of her relatives consulted us and was telling us that he needs his medications urgently because he has never gone a day without the medications. But there are serious people, um, serious health issues affecting persons who have been remanded to police and prison custody. And um, we are hoping that in the days ahead, we will repeat our motion for bail before a different court. And the next court we go to, for the people who went to court yesterday, the next court we go to would we'll see to it that they, they are released and attend court from home. Uh, I do appreciate you for, for this update. And also, uh, we'll keep an eye on how things play out uh, tomorrow because you are all expected in court. Uh, gentlemen, I, I thank you so much for all of this update and for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Noah Damte, thank you so much, a private legal practitioner, lawyer for uh, the protesters who have been arrested. The Democracy Hub protesters, uh, Sunny Abdul Rahman is my colleague, our international affairs correspondent here at Media General, connecting with us live from the streets of New York, where the UN General Assembly is taking place. Sunny, thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Appreciate you. And in the coming days, co continue to connect with you. But this is your election command center. Still staying on this matter. Coming up next, civil society is demanding the revocation of the, of the law that permits mining in forest reserves. They insist it must go if the fight against illegal mining must be won. That is coming up next here on Ghana Tonight. And it formed a prominent part of the thought leadership and the public forum that we had earlier today with support from the Nature and Development Foundation, former Chief Executive Officer of the Minerals Commission, Tony Aubin, has called for the repeal of this LI-2462 that allows for mining in forest reserves. He joined other guest speakers and panelists at the Thought Leadership earlier today, organized by Media General in partnership with Nature and Development Foundation, who resolved that a state of emergency should be declared and called placing a moratorium on all forms of mining. Uh, the forest, where well, they were mining in the forest, but uh, no, we have taken it out. I think it will bring confidence. Otherwise, nobody is confident that we are able to resolve this. When, when you talk to you, they say... Member of Parliament for Asante Achim North and the Apia Kubi said, the fight against Galamse should be devoid of politics. Let all political leaders come together and make a statement. And let's hold them to it. Thank you very much. The president yeah. is going, but the people who are coming after him, what will they do? On the part of former legal advisor to Operation Vanguard and legal practitioner, Dr. Jamal Tonzwa, there is no political will and commitment to fight the canker. Why did we not use satellite technology? Because we didn't tell the politicians we know what should be done. We just told them that whole oh, national security, we, 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 we have an institution, we put them there, and they gave it to us. We must tell them that we know what we want. We must be data-driven and evidence-based in this new approach. 
panelists acknowledge the call for a state of emergency to deal with Galamse. Who in his right mind, who has the interest of Ghanaians at heart, will think of passing LI-2462? It's perverse. My sadness goes to the fact that my children are in their 50s, my grandchildren are in their, in their, in their 30s. And it's for them that I weep. Because if you run Ghana like this, Ghana will be no more. We are killing Ghana. If certain people are not complicit, there's no way Galamse will happen. That is a fact. If you go to some of the communities, you see the police, mining is happening right behind them. In Potrasse, the community is so agitated. They want to stop mining in Densu River. The police in the district is always ready to support them. Well, there's more of this on 3news.com. Make some time and visit 3news.com. And this leads us to Manifesto Check on your election command center. Well, we stayed the steam on this illegal mining issue and LI2462 is Dennis's focus on Manifesto Check. What do we have? Well, it's actually the focus of the CSOs who are into this space advocating for the revocation of what has now become part of the law of this country. Mm -hmm. They say it is one of the things that need to be taken out if the fight against Galamse must be won. And their argument is pretty simple. This particular law now allows some dispensation to be made for mining in the forest reserves. So they are saying that for the government to have taken this step, it means that what we are now seeing now, by way of a lot of licenses being granted and permits, for mining companies to go into forest reserves is a re as a result of this particular law, for which reason they are advocating that it be revoked as soon as possible. They call it an infamous law, and in their view, it's bad law. Mm. So that was basically the call for the, of the CSOs today, which was roundedly supported by almost all the stakeholders who were at the forum today that we did. But let's take a look at what really is contained in this particular law for which the CSOs are opposed to it. That's right. So that is the, 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 the name of the regulation. It says Environmental Protection, Mining and Forest Reserves Regulations 2022, LI2462. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at the application, what it means is that how is this law going to be applied? What is of interest to us this evening, for which reason the CSOs in this space are opposed to it, is the fact that now, when you look at the regulation 1.1, it reads that these regulations apply to mining activities in forest reserve. Their view is that there should not be a way that we even want to contemplate mining in forest reserves. True. For which reason we now, have, we now want to have regulations that will regulate that space. For mm -hmm. them, mining in forest reserves is a no-no for them. Mm. Now, when you continue to look at the purpose of the regulation itself, and that is regulation two, and let's look at regulation 2A, that for the purpose of these regulations, I mean, the purpose of these regulations is to A, provide for the environmental management of mining activities in forest reserves through. Now for them, they don't even want to go further. Mm -hmm. Once it's about mining in forest reserves. Just don't think don't about know. it. Yes, mm -hmm. and as part of the discussions, I mean, the, especially for the, the CSOs themselves, they have observed that this law was passed in 2022. And then thereafter, they noticed that there was a surge in the grant of permits for mining companies to enter forest reserves. So what we are seeing today by way of invasion of the forest reserves, in their view, is as a result of this particular ally. Now, the other area which um, they have a strong view against is the fact that it talks about prohibited areas. Now, when you read this on the face of it, it appears to have protected the significant biodiversity areas or the forest reserves and all that. However, there's a certain regulation that appears to have undone this protection. Right. So when you look at regulation 3.1, mm -hmm. it says that a person shall not issue a license or permit to any person to undertake mining activity, including ex exploration activity in the following areas. Now it lists them, including a, a globally significant bio biodiversity area. This is where we have our forest reserves fall under. That's right. A protected provenance area, an institution, it goes on and on and on. All these things are supposed to be protected. You supposed cannot, to and, be? Yes. But are and, they protected as we Well, speak? so now when you look at the exception that has been created under Regulation 2 and 3.2, it says that despite paragraph A, that is the list that has been provided here, of sub-regulation 1, 
the president may, subject to Article 268 of the Constitution, give approval in writing to mining company to undertake mining activity in a globally significant biodiversity area in the national interest. Mind you, I explained that where we have the globally significant diverse, uh, biodiversity area, that is where our forest reserves fall under. True. Now, this provision says that the president may give approval subject to Article 286. Now, Article 286 basically talks about the parliamentary approval for grant of concessions to companies and all that. Mm. So they are saying that a president may do so. Now, the argument of the CSOs is that once this has been provided, and we know that the power that the president has an executive power, a president who has some majority in parliament can always come under this and deplete our forest reserves. Right. So that is one of the reasons for which they think this particular law is bad law. In their mm. view, if inroads must be made in the fight against Galamsey, then this particular ally has to be revoked. So in a sense, that is it. I mean, this call has been on the table for quite a while now. Now the question is, did the political parties listen to them? Have they had engagement with these CSOs? Have these found their way into their manifestos? Well, when you look at the manifestos of the key political parties, you would find that they make the case that there will be some um, kind of reviews of the laws. Right. But no specific mention has been uh, made to the effect that they repeal this LI particular. Exactly. Hmm. But of course, there are promises that the laws or the mining regime or the legal framework of the mining um, will be reviewed. As to whether that will include the revocation of this ally, that has not been mentioned especially by either the NDC, the MPP, Movement for Change, New Force, and, and all, all the, the other parties. Thank you so much. The verdict, as always. It's with the people. It's with the people. And uh, we'll go for this quick break. When we're back, we're getting to issues of labor. Stay with us. Welcome back. This is Ghana Tonight. Coming up next, we go straight into the issues of labor right now as uh, the education sector is beginning to feel the bite of strikes by some labor unions as University of Ghana postpones its reopening date. And that's a conversation that we're getting into right now. And thankfully, we have uh, George Ansong, who is uh, the president of the senior staff of the universities of Ghana, not that's the, all the universities um, in this country, the senior staff associations is a president, is joining us, and the chairman for that matter is joining us right now. Thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Uh, first off, uh, you've been on strike for quite a while. What was the latest on the strike, Ms. Anzong? Uh, we are in our second week. And what exactly? The second week. We started a strike last week, Monday. And it's still on. And today, what I've heard from the news is that some of the investors were supposed to have reopened. They have postponed the reopening date. Uh, some were supposed to have had some PhD viva. They have postponed it. So you can sense that the strike has started by it. But people felt that students were on vacation. So, uh, the strike will not have any impact. But in our second week, uh, the, the, the management are beginning to feel the impact. And, and indeed, and that's led to this University of Ghana Legan uh, notice, and we'll put it on the screen right now, what you just made reference to. We got a copy of that notice. Said the um, uh, also making that um, indication right now with respect to the issues that have been put out uh, there as we have seen, and some of the groups that are already on strike, as we see, is uh, the NCC um, workers on strike since September 18, and demanding better conditions of service and timely negotiation, and, uh, and the senior staff of the investors, that's you, your group, uh, Mr. Anson, you've been on strike since September 16, also calling for improved working conditions and the fulfillment of government promises made to you, and Teachers and Educational Workers Union, TEU, also been on strike 6 September 20. And also you have 
uh, the Ghana Association of University Administrators also started their strike on September 18, 2024, over unpaid outstanding allowance. All of these groups are, and, and the Mortuary Workers Union, they've given indication of starting their strike tomorrow, September 26, due to poor working conditions, unpaid salary arrears, and a, a lack of adequate personal protective equipment. So, Ms. Hanson, quickly before I let, you, I let you go, what are the real concerns and the real issues um, with reason why you're on strike as we speak? The demands are, uh, one, there's this uh, allowance that comes through all categories of staff, for those who qualify. And this is an off-campus allowance and a vehicle maintenance allowance. And the rate for these allowances are pegged with x one price of fuel. So in the initial stages, every month, depending on the price of fuel at the pump, uh, it will be reviewed. But government thought it twice, it was uh, becoming a, a problem. So government and union sat down and agreed that this time we'll review it two times in a year. So we'll review it in January to June, then July to December. So this year the review came new rates came and we all have only to find out that government has authorized only UTAG members to be paid that allowance. So we organize ourselves and threaten to embark on strike. So a day before the strike, government issued the authorization letter for us to also be paid. So we suspended the strike, thinking that government was going to do the need for. Only to be fooled that as I speak with you, those universities who are on controller payroll have still not been paid the review rate from January to June. Government has also reviewed it the second time, that is in July. That one too, government has failed to write the authorization letter for us, but he has written it for you. And we thought that this particular allowance, so why there is some portion of us to be paid, leaving the other parts? The commission felt none of them have contacted you to even speak to you about the concerns and reason why you're on strike. The University of Ghana has had to postpone its reopening of your admissions and then also the academic calendar for this year because of the strike that you are on. And many others as well. Well, the Mortuary Workers Union, they serve notice that tomorrow they are going on strike. You know what that means? Mortuary workers on strike. Well, my colleague Godwin Asediba told the story of what they're going through. And this documentary is going to be aired tomorrow. But just give you a sneak peek of it. Viewer discretion, please. For the umpteenth time, Mortuary attendants have gone on strike to demand better conditions of service. The General Secretary of the Mortuary Workers Association of Ghana, Richard Jordan, revealed that some attendants at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital are developing serious health complications with others losing their lives. Serious. We've lost over 30 in a year. Kolebu has lost three people in this, just this year. They're all dying everywhere. So many mess. So everybody is sick at the mortuary. In fact, there's nobody I can say is physically fit. If we should do a test on all of them now, I can tell you, is it that the person is visually going impaired? Is it that the person is actually having a problem with his waist because of the lifting, the legs, or the person is having some kind of kidney problem or maybe some lungs problem? We are working in very unconducive environment which is not fit for purpose. Many of them have been neglected beyond you know, human in our use. Back inside the Kolebu mortuary, Kawe, not her real name, now in her 11th year as a mortuary attendant, continues to face stigma and isolation. Yeah, Branca, son. So if someone will pass away, if whether it's HIV, tuberculosis you don't know what kind of sickness is taking this person to his early or his grave but that's your work for you to do so please 
the governments to come to our head and listen to us. We have tried to talk to them severally, but no response. The smell in here is absolutely unbearable. You can't be able to stay around for more than a minute. Now, well, as they start their strike tomorrow, these mortuary workers, we tell their story and what they go through. Godwin Asidiba on that one. Tomorrow at 9 p.m. on TV3 and across all social media platforms as well. Make a date. We're getting to it. On behalf of the rest of the team, I want to say thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Make a date sometime tomorrow for another conversation. I am Alfred Kansi. Have a good night.